Good evening. The search for a Brexit breakthrough moved into a different phase today with talks between Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn. The first exchanges were said to be constructive and they agreed a programme of work to try to find a way forward. Further discussions are planned for tomorrow. Mr Corbyn said the meeting had been useful but inconclusive. And this evening, MPs have been considering new legislation which would force Mrs May to seek a longer extension to the Brexit process and to give more power to MPs. Let's go live to Westminster and our political editor, Laura Kinsberg. Thank you. Well, MPs collectively have only over just a week to sort this out. And today we saw a new phase in the Brexit saga, a new phase where both Jeremy Corbyn and Theresa May were saying and suggesting that they might be able to come together. But the question tonight is open. What might they actually be able to agree on? There is certainly signs that they are willing to talk, but willing to move, willing to budge. That's just not clear yet. A thunderclap could lightning strike. Two enemies make peace to make Brexit happen. Westminster has nine days to work it out. Jeremy Corbyn now and his team have been asked to help. I want the government to understand that the House does not support the deal that she's agreed. She's got to come up, at the, even at this very late stage, with something that is acceptable to the House, which does move in the direction that I've said that the Labour Party wants in order to reach an agreement with the EU. Prime Minister, will it be a Labour Brexit? In normal life, compromise is, well, normal. For Prime Ministers, it can be toxic. And many of Theresa May's colleagues are little short of appalled. The Prime Minister said the biggest threat to our standing in the world, to our defence and to our economy, is the leader of the opposition. In her judgment, what now qualifies him for involvement in Brexit? Prime Minister! Awkward doesn't begin to cover it. Every member of this House is involved in Brexit. Yeah. I want to deliver Brexit. I want to deliver Brexit in an orderly way. I want to do it as soon as possible. I want to do it without us having to fight European parliamentary elections. Labour has its own splits gentlemen. and stresses but too, whether to back a Remain referendum or not. Labour's policy on Brexit is to secure membership of a customs union, the single market, and crucially, to get a people's vote on any deal. Even if Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn can find common cause, it's huge for the Prime Minister to move away from her red lines after digging in for so long. But the view at the top of the government seems to be, do whatever it takes. Hello. Hello, Hello. Hi. Laura. Very nice to, nice to see you. For me, it is an article of faith that we must leave the European Union. We promised this country that we would do so. The only way unless the Prime Minister's deal is to be voted through, is to seek with Labour some common ground so that we can effect a swift exit. But you also made a promise to Conservative voters there would not be a move giving away some of her red lines. If we were not to leave because we were unprepared in a situation that we now face uh, to move any of the red lines that we have set, then we would effectively mean that we would never leave at all. He wouldn't offer any legal guarantees that compromises would last, but might accept Labour's plan for a customs union, so long resisted by the Tories. That is a prize that if you had offered it to my colleagues five years ago, we would have bitten off the arm of the Prime Minister to get it back. Hasn't the failure to compromise until this almost last moment created months and months of needless turmoil for the people of this country. I think what it shows is that the Prime Minister was determined that she should honour her red lines. Foolhardy? Uh, uh, well, I, no, I think that was her attempting to fulfil her uh, duty as she saw it. The article of faith that we have signed with the British people is that we should leave. By but doing that sounds this, like blind faith, no, Attorney General. But, but, you keep no, saying no, it's an article of faith. But it sounds like blind faith. He's sort of saying, whatever we have to do just to get out. Is that wise? Yes, we've got to leave. The SNP's votes matter hugely too. But this doesn't sound yet like some kind of breakthrough. It's still, to be frank, not entirely clear to me where the Prime Minister is prepared to compromise. Uh, she's keen to know where others might want to compromise, but is not being particularly open about where uh, her red lines might be removed. 
If you were in any doubt at how divided this place is. The eyes to the right, 310. The nose to the left, 310. <laughs> Genuine deadlock over whether to hold another round of votes on different versions of Brexit. The Speaker's the casting ballot right, stays with the status quo. The nose to the left, so for now, MPs' quest to find another solution is stuck. So too are all of us. Laura Koonsberg, BBC News, Westminster. So just to recap, as we've been hearing, talks between uh, Theresa May and the Leader of the Opposition, uh, Jeremy Corbyn, uh, were taking place earlier today and they were meeting to try to find some kind of solution to end the parliamentary deadlock there that we saw illustrated in that uh, vote in the Commons today. But there are still several other hurdles to cross. So our Deputy Political Editor, John Pienaar, is here with his analysis. John? Theresa May is looking for compromise. So what kind of Brexit might take shape, assuming any deal is possible? Mrs May and Jeremy Corbyn suddenly agreeing never seemed likely. He wants permanent ties to the EU customs union, same import duties, so no outside trade deals. He wants to stay close to the single market. That means free movement of people. Both leaders accept that should change. But what about a new referendum? She's against, he's never been very keen. But to many MPs and most Labour members, it's a priority, as it is to the SNP, the Lib Dems, Plaid Cymru and the new independent group. Would either leader really mind if these talks broke down in the end? On Mrs May's side, some hate the fact she's talking to Mr Corbyn, lending him legitimacy, they say. But Brexiteers also fear she's on course to stay too close to the EU. The angriest Tories want her gone quickly, so a new leader can rewrite whatever is agreed. On Mr Corbyn's side, some believe his true wish was to keep his hands clean of Brexit. Let the Tories get the blame for whatever goes wrong. So what next? Agreement means a deal might start to take shape. If talks finally break down, Mrs May says it's up to MPs. Then more voting on Brexit options, staying close to the EU, a referendum, or what many Tories would prefer, leaving with no deal. And of course, Mrs May's deal would be back in the mix. Next Wednesday, it's back to Brussels. The PM wants an EU deal before April the 12th. That's the deadline to avoid taking part in the coming European elections, which start on May the 23rd. But the EU may insist on a longer delay and Britain taking part. That's if the EU accepts any delay at all. They could say no. Then it's the outcome many fear but others want, a Brexit with no deal at all. John, many thanks again. John Pienaar there, our deputy political editor. Well, what do European leaders, especially the very powerful Chancellor of Germany, uh, Angela Merkel, make of the uh, events at Westminster today? Let's join our Europe editor, Katja Adler, who's in Berlin. What is the view there, Katja? Well, Hugh, you know, it's just not Angela Merkel's style to get all emotional about Brexit like some EU leaders or provocative like others, such as the French president. Today, she praised what she described as intensive political efforts to try and break the Brexit deadlock in the UK. But make no mistake, she too is hugely frustrated at what she described as the ongoing differences of opinion in Westminster. And why is it that she cares so much exactly? Is it because of those German and car makers who would take a hit in the case of a no deal Brexit. Of course, the economy does play into it, but the German Chancellor has broader concerns as well. She truly believes in the European Union as a peace project and she worries about the potential effects of a no deal Brexit on the island of Ireland and the possibility of a return to violence there. She heads to Dublin tomorrow to try and tackle that conundrum of how to keep that border open in the case of a no deal Brexit and still impose the checks and controls the EU wants in order to protect its single market. It needs to get sorted, said Jean-Claude Juncker of the European Commission today. He said the no deal Brexit was very likely and he said deal or no deal the EU would be chasing the UK to pay that Brexit bill that 39 billion pounds and also to do its bit over the Irish border although that's all for the future Hugh right now Mr Juncker Mrs Merkel and most other EU leaders just want MPs to unite around that Brexit agreement that they negotiated with the Prime Minister.
Katja, many thanks again. Katja Adler there for us uh, in Berlin, our Europe editor. Let's go back to Westminster then and talk to Laura Kunzberg, our political editor. This word constructive that was used for these talks today, Laura, should people be reading into that that some kind of agreement is at least possible? I think constructive is rather a coverall, Hugh. It could probably be used to describe anything that doesn't end up in a stand-up blazing row. I mean, talking to people who've been involved in those discussions today, the sense was that, you know, both sides are playing nice. Both sides are taking this seriously. Their teams will have more technical discussions tomorrow. But as I understand it, what there was not from either side was anything that you could construe to be a big move. Neither Labour nor the Conservatives ready to put something on the table and say, OK, I know that I've been refusing to compromise on this issue, but actually, here it is. This is my offer. What therefore is very striking is what the Attorney General, Geoffrey Cox, a prominent Brexiteer, said to us today in an interview when he said, look, if the customs union is something that might be the price for this, well, I'd be willing to put up with it. Now, that might sound a bit technical, might sound a bit obscure, but for the Prime Minister and many Eurosceptics, this idea of being outside the customs union has been totemic. It has been one of the things that has separated them from former Remainers looking for a way out of the European Union that doesn't, in their view, create too much turmoil from the economy. And it's one of the things that has separated Labour's vision of Brexit from the Tories' vision of Brexit. So to have somebody like Mr Cox out there saying, look, leaving is the prize, and if it means that means we have to suck up the customs union in the way that Labour wants it might be worth it, that is significant. But as yet, there is not sign of a black and white deal being put together by the two sides. And for the rest of us, that still means, I'm afraid, that with more than a week to go, we have still no certainty and no clarity about how and when our leaders seek to take us out of the European Union, with most assumptions being we're looking at a longer delay and a softer Brexit, whether that's through compromise between Labour and the Tory party or a compromise that's forced on the Prime Minister by Parliament. Laura, once again, thanks very much. Laura Kunzberg with the latest thoughts there at Westminster on the Brexit process.